you're all doing absolutely fantastic today. So we are going to be talking about the D23 Gold membership today, uh, as well as the welcome package that you get and everything that comes with it. Uh, if you don't know what D23 is, it is the official Disney fan club. Uh, you can be a member for completely free. Um, but you can also join the gold membership, which is what I did. There are, of course, some perks to joining the gold and the gold family membership. Being that the complimentary membership is obviously free, um, you are not going to get as much as you would get if you are a gold member. You also get a copy of the Disney 23 magazine, which is gorgeous. You also get a card and a certificate as well as the annual gift and special member events. This is the membership gift that you get. It was only appropriate that for 2018, the D23 member gift pay tribute to a beloved personality who in 1928 helped lay the very foundation for all the Walt Disney Company's future successes during a particularly important year in Disney history at that. So, obviously it's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and if you are not aware, this is going to be Mickey Mouse's 90th birthday slash anniversary. So yeah, it's just really, really fun to celebrate Mickey and it's fun to do it in this way. So they also said in each of these little kits, you do get 23 different items that reflect whatever the theme is, uh, which makes sense for the D23. So I wanted to show you guys what is inside this little kit that, or I guess, I don't know if it's a kit, but <laughs> this little box that we got. So if you are curious about joining the D23 Gold membership, then you will know what is in store for your gift. Luckily on the D23 website, they do actually have a breakdown of what every piece is. And it also gives you a little bit of a write up about um, what each piece is. One thing that was kind of disappointing for me was that when I opened this up and I was going through all of the different things, a lot of stuff is just like pieces of paper and a lot of it did end up getting kind of crinkled. So I don't know if things got shifted around in transit or what, but you know, there's a lot of things that got bent which isn't really a huge deal for me, but if you're a collector and you're someone who really would like to put all of this stuff on display, then that does kind of suck. So let's get started with um, Steamboat Willie. What we received is a uh, script page. So it has script on one side and the storyboard on the other. Um, and it doesn't go in order necessarily. It's one and then it's nine. Well, right up says, uh, Star is born as Mickey dazzles audiences with antics set to animation's first synchronized soundtrack. Predating the invention of the storyboard, this illustrated continuity becomes a treasured memento that Walt Disney keeps in his desk. The next thing that we got is this little um, postcard, and it, on it it says, Gobs of good wishes, Mickey Mouse. And then it says, me too, Butch. So I guess Butch must be the character that's kind of like up here maybe, and Mickey is down here. Um, and this was a Mickey Mouse comic strip fan card. So and this is from 1931, and the description says, newspaper funny pages bring Mickey into homes, and millions follow his serialized adventures. When Mickey poses for a formal photograph, readers are encouraged to write in to see the finished result and find tag-along pal Butch make a, making a surprise appearance. So yeah, Butch must be the, little, the guy in the back. And the next thing that we got is this, and it is a cell from a short called Parade of the Award Nominees. This is from 1932. On the back of it, it says, Mickey Mouse presents Parade of the Award Nominees, photographed in Technicolor, new cartoon process. Created for one showing at the 19... 32 Academy Awards dinner, Mickey appears in color for the first time on screen. Comic characters of the year's Oscar nominees process alongside Minnie Mouse, Clarabelle Cow, and Pluto. So Mickey was not alone in this, but uh, obviously being that this is a Mickey box, we just got a little cell of Mickey Mouse himself. Okay, so the next thing that we received, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, looks kind of creepy. Uh, and it is this little envelope that we got. And so apparently these are patterns for stuffed animals that could be made. So on the front, it shows you what they are supposed to look like. So you have Mickey over here and Minnie over here. And then on the back, it has the pattern 
um, all of the different sizing, everything that you need for it. And this is from a call, company called McCall. Um, and it is a printed pattern with transfer. So then on the inside of this, it actually comes with a little photo of Walt, completely surrounded by all of these Mickey and Minnie dolls all over the place. And I will say that these, oh, I guess these are just the Mickey dolls. The dolls here look a lot cuter than the doll does in <laughs> this picture. These dolls look kind of cute. This one looks terrifying. Um, so these are, this actually says on the back of the um, photo that Walt Disney enjoys the company of the popular Charlotte Clark Mickey Mouse dolls outside his studio on Hyperion Avenue in 1930. But this actual pattern is from 1932, so the same year as the uh, cell that we received as well. And the little description says, Huggable Mickey and Minnie toys became a national craze. And when official doll maker Charlotte Clark cannot accommodate the overwhelming demand, Disney authorizes a home use pattern so mothers can make mice for their eager little, little ones. Then the next item that we are receiving is from 1933, so we are really, really banging home the 30s in this box right now. Uh, and it is this little decal, and it has Mickey and Minnie Mouse on it. And it says on here, uh, it is the Hyperion Studio Ikme Ausme Crest. And the little description says, as the Disney studio on Hyperion Avenue prospers and expands, a whimsical coat of arms appears on the interior door. With phone, with faux formality, a banner device in pig Latin glorifies the source behind the success, Mickey Mouse. The next thing that we received is another one that got kind of bent and damaged in the shipping process. Uh, and this is a Carl Lemel, Lemel scrapbook page art which I'm probably saying terribly wrong. This is from 1935. Oh, interesting. This isn't even necessarily a Disney person. So it says on here, um, to Carl Lemel, in memory of the days when I produced Oswald for Universal, best wishes, always sincerely, Walt Disney. The little write-up says, um, Hollywood pioneer Carl Lamel's Universal Pictures once distributed Disney Oswald cartoons and later Mickey's as well. In tribute to Lamel, Walt sends this historic greeting, likely the only time Mickey and Oswald will meet until the Lucky, Ra until the Lucky Rabbit's 2006 homecoming. So the next thing that we receive looks like it's actually a sticker and it is this little orange guy that says Walt Disney Productions on here. So this is from the 1940s and it is the Walt Disney Productions logo. So it says on here, this the new purpose-built Disney campus in Burbank allows increased productivity and possibilities. This elegant logo art appears on everything from electrical generators and location vehicles to mailroom bicycles and matchbooks. So the next one that we received again is kind of bent. You can see right here where it got a little bit creased. Um, but this is from 1941 and this is the nifty 90s animation drawing. The description says, uh, Mickey is not only taken by surprise by a coquettish mini in this nostalgic cartoon short, but also drawn with enormous, pay, with enormous appeal by Disney legend Fred Moore. Alright, so it looks like we have another sticker, and this one says, Aircraft Worker Building Planes for Victory. So this is from 1942, uh, and the description says, with his wrench and propeller forming a V for victory, Mickey represents the can-do spirit of the American home front. Ultimately, Disney provides mascot and insignia art, buoy buoying the resolve of thousands serving in military and civilian groups. So the next item that we got made me laugh so much because it's kind of creepy, but hilarious and adorable all at the same time. So this is a Christmas card. Um, it says it's a Walt Disney and staff Christmas card. So on the front cover, it is obviously Mickey dressed up like Santa, but he's holding Santa's face, which <laughs> is kind of weird and terrifying. And like, I'm sure it's supposed to be like a mask, but it just looks like, oh my God, it just looks so creepy to me. Um, so then when you open it up, it just has so many different Disney characters. There's a calendar over here for 1948 on either side. And then when you close it up, there's just an adorable little Jiminy Cricket sitting on a snowflake. So I really, really like this a lot. 
Um, this is from 1947, so obviously leads into 19, 1948 with the calendar. And it says, for Walt's traditional holiday greeting, artist Hank Porter depicts Mickey as another beloved joy giver, Santa Claus. Inside a galaxy of Disney characters toasts the new year, including Mickey's feature coasters from Fun and Fancy Free. So the next thing that we received is called the Television Prop Book and portrait enclosure. So the book is from 1954 and the portrait enclosure is from 1953. So the book looks like this. Uh, it looks like a little scrapbook for Mickey Mouse and then when you open it up, it is this really nice portrait of Mickey kind of standing in what looks like his own makeshift office, I suppose, or maybe in Walt's office. Um, and it says in the description, uh, in his first weekly television broadcast, Walt Disney not only introduces his innovative theme park concept, but pays tribute to the mouse that started it all. Walt's on-screen scrapbook contains Mickey's portrait in oil by Disney legend John Hench. So our next item that we received is from 1954, and it is this. It says that it is the television commercial model sheet. For a brief time, Disney creates animated television commercials featuring simplified modern stylings of characters designed to read clearly on the early TV screens. Artist Tom Oreb is the first to rethink Mickey in these geometric contemporary terms. So that's interesting that they had to make him look different in order for him to be seen on these new televisions. So I loved the Christmas card and everything. It was really cute and really fun. But I think that this might be my favorite of everything that we got. And it is the Sorcerer's Apprentice record cover. Um, I love Fantasia so much. I love the Sorcerer's Apprentice part in there. The Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey is my very, very favorite version of Mickey. And I just love this artwork on here. I think it is so beautiful. So it actually is like a functioning record cover. There's no record in there, but you know, you could pop one in there. Um, and then on the back, it says that it's just the Sorcerer's Apprentice narrated by Sterling Holloway. And this is from 1957. So the description says, dramatic art by Disney legend Al Dempster shows Mickey at his magical best, accompanying the original Fantasia recording of the Paul Dukas classical composition. To make sure young listeners can follow along, clever narration by Sterling Holloway is added. So the next thing that we received is this little postcard featuring the lineup for the original Mickey Mouse Club. This is from 1957. It says it is a Mouseketeers fan card. So featuring five themed days, catchy music, educational outreach, and unforgettable headwear, the Mickey Mouse Club is a broadcasting sensation. This card shows its young stars ready for their third season, along with Musketeers, Jimmy Dodd, and Roy Williams. Our next piece of Mickey Mouse memorabilia is this um, poster, little poster guy. This is from 1971, and it is the Mickey Mouse, Walt Disney World Mickey Mouse Review Attraction poster. So it says, Mickey conquers a new media medium of animation as an audio animatronics figure, headlining his own show in the new Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. Hollywood designers John Decour, oh boy, John Decour Sr., sorry, and David Negron's dynamic poster has motion in mind, plus a few hidden friends. Our next item is this backstage uh, magazine cover replica. Uh, this is obviously, as it says up here, from the summer of 1978, um, and it is uh, illustrated semi-annually, and it is this photo painting of Walt. Looks like he's painting Mickey as himself, or himself as Mickey, I don't know, but I feel like this is like a Norman Rockwell thing. Um, and so then on the inside, there is a little article in here, um, and then on the back, it's promoting some new Disney merchandise or Mickey merchandise, I guess I should say. So uh, the description says that this is a Disneyland backstage cast magazine. And then it says, uh, parodying Norman Rockwell's famous Saturday evening post cover, Charlie, Charles Boyer's triple self-portrait fronts a celebration of both Walt and Mickey, including Mickey's own story, a photo timeline, and a look at the wristwatch that became a generational icon. Our next item is a button. And this is a happy birthday Mickey button from 1978. Uh, and it says in here, this jubilant logo honors the 50th anniversary of Mickey's debut, inspired by familiar cartoon title card 
art, legendary Disney animator Ward Kimball sports his pin back throughout a commemorative whistle stop train tour and for many years thereafter. So the next item that we have is actually, I haven't even looked at it yet um, because it was rolled up in a poster. And I will give them props for this, is that they actually rolled it up and then put a piece of paper around the poster and then taped the piece of paper around the poster. Wow, this is really, really heavy duty. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, this is, wow. Wow, okay, so this poster, oh, how cool. This is for Epcot and for Tokyo Disneyland. Um, at the top it says we can do it and then cross cross out can do and says we are doing it um it says building always building a better mouse this is called the we are doing it wed mapo poster um based on art created for a library of congress exhibit disney imagineers used this poster for inspiration as they hurry to build both epcot center and tokyo disneyland the, or the original heading is optimistically overprinted as the project's near completion. Our next piece that we received in this box is from Mickey's Christmas Carol, which is actually one of John's very favorite Christmas Carol um, iterations. He's not a huge, huge Disney person, but he does love Mickey's Christmas Carol. We do watch this every year uh, around Christmas time. So this is actually a... Uh, page of sheet music it says that it is a oh what a merry christmas day local vocal lead sheet um so it says after a 30 year absence mickey returns to the big screen in mickey's christmas carol in 1983 disney greets dickens with this song by disney legend erwin costell from mary poppins and frederick Cyril surles seen here in its na nascent pre-production form sorry i can't read today or pronounce names, apparently. Uh, so our next piece is, <laughs> this is a little bit of a stretch for me. I have to admit, John and I are both looking at this like, mm, I mean, I guess I see it, but uh, uh, I don't know. So it's this piece from Tron. There is a hidden Mickey on this. Hopefully you can kind of see it, like it's the darker blue is the Mickey. This is from 1982. Uh, only the sharpest eyes catch Mickey's image as Flynn and Yuri ride a solar sailor beyond the game grid of Tron. Within the electronic terrain, Mickey is on hand as computer animation makes magic that was unimaginable in the Steamboat Willie days. So then our next item is from 1983 and it takes us all the way to Tokyo Disneyland and it is this really cool little souvenir bag. It has the Country Bear Jamboree and what looks like the Thunder Mountain and Space Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dumbo, It's a Small World, one of the river boats, uh, of course the iconic Mickey Mouse balloons. It does say on here, this is from 1983 if I didn't say that already, a colorful array of classic attractions beckons visitors to explore the new kingdom of family dreams in Japan. Mickey welcomes the world and ushers in an era of international Disney entertainment experiences that extend beyond movie and television screens. So then the next thing, again, is something near and dear to my heart growing up. I remember pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing to get this, and we finally did, and I was so excited. And so this is actually a napkin from the Disney Channel launch party in 1983. So I wasn't quite alive by, in 1983, but by the time I was old enough to realize that, hey, my neighbors have channels that I don't have, what is this madness? And after a lot of pushing and pushing and pushing with my parents, we finally got it and it was fantastic. Um, so on this napkin, you can see there's Mickey on the front and then on the back here, it has the old Disney Channel logo. Uh, it's far more simplistic now, of course. It says, when Disney inaugurates its premium cable service in 1983, one of the first images broadcast in a mouse-shaped satellite, ears poised to beam entertainment to all. Launch parties celebrate another milestone and medium for Mickey. All right guys, so we are finally down to our last piece from this box and it is a quite modern piece in comparison to all of the other things that we got because this item is actually from 2016, which is the year that Shanghai Disney opened. It is a copy of the stained glass that is on their main street. So hopefully you can kind of see it. Um, but it has Donald, Goofy, and Mickey down here, and then it's just beautiful. 
all over the place. So this is Mickey Avenue. Flanked by pals Donald Duck and Goofy, Mickey greets the sunshine of new horizons on Mickey Avenue. The cartoon-themed thoroughfare transport visitors to a one real town that's also a gateway to the, near, the newest in Disney wonders. So that is everything from this D23 Gold membership haul. So if you are a D23 member, please let me know and let me know what your favorite item from this box was. Like I said, I think mine is the Sorcerer's Apprentice record sleeve just because I love the Sorcerer's Apprentice so, so much. Um, so. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for a little bit today. I truly appreciate it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button on your way out, all of those good things. And I will be sure to see you in my next video. Bye guys.